Right, Bart. That's Cobb himself on the box. I promised Jamie that Cobb would never testify against him. Cross Creek Station's the end of the line for this run. It's just like old times, before I left you. I ought to slap you. You don't mean that. I told you to go before the coach comes. Well, someone's got to help with the horses. Mike's always managed before you came. Oh, you're putting too much on the boy. You want him to grow up before his time. It's how he grows up that concerns me, and concerns me alone. Well, you need help around here. Here one day, and you think you know how to run our lives. One day. And a night. The boy needs a man around here to help him, even if you think you don't. All I need is for you to get out. Get out and leave us alone. Ma! He's my friend. Why can't he stay? Mike. But he said he'd teach me to shoot rabbits. You know, I think the boy's taking quite a shine to me. An honor. Mr. Cobb himself. Glad to see you, Terry. Hi, Mike. Mr. Cobb? We're going to be staying over till tomorrow night's coach, but you water these horses there going right on. Sure. <laughs> uh, good to see you, Chris. But it's sad you're so far from home at Christmas time. Well, now, I figure a bite of Terry McKenna's plum pudding is going to make up for all of that. You've had a long, hard day, Mrs. Lachlan. You got a good night's rest. You'll be home soon. You can do most anything. I guess you learn a lot moving around to all the places you want to see. Well, I guess some fellas just born fiddle footed. And some have a way with horses. You may say I'm a jack of all trades and master none. Well, Mike here's kind of a jack of all trades himself. Place looks just fine, Mike. You've been doing a man sized job since your uncle died. All right, Charlie, take him away. We'll see you in Brisbane. Questioning your sincerity, Chris, but your sanity. Is something wrong with me? Well, it was risky enough going after Jamie Stewart alone. But coming here like this to testify against him when they'll probably be setting him free. The Stewart brothers will never leave you alone after that. Well, that's another good reason for your having a man around the state stop protection. You know perfectly well that you and Mike can't handle it all by yourselves. I was afraid you were going to make some changes here. Harry, the only change I have in mind is hiring a man to take your brother's place, that's all. Like the man out there, for instance. The sundowner? Sure, he looks like he could handle it. I won't have him here. Why not? Well, ever since he showed up yesterday, he's been filling Mike's head with tales of bush rangers and gold diggers and the like. The boy is restless enough as a tis without a man like him. I gotta squeeze the trigger gently, boy. 
I got four bullets left, right? You see the triangle there? You watch this. Again? You may not. You've more important things to do. Well, have you forgotten that I need wood for the stove to cook the supper? I'm sorry if we frightened you. Stay right where you are, Mr. Carlton. But the Quiet, gas... boy. The gun's empty. There's a rifle at your back. Jamie's brothers wanted to come along, too. Try something, Cobb. Then we can shut your mouth for good. And have the whole country up in arms. That's why Jamie put me in charge instead of a hot-headed fool like you. What the devil's going on? Bail up, Sonny. Well, what have we here? I've been needing a gold watch. You can take whatever money I'm carrying, but that watch has been in my family for generations. Don't beg, Bill. I don't like arguments. Come on, Bill. The sooner these gentlemen get what they want, the sooner they'll be leaving. Lady, that's where you're wrong. Nobody leaves until after the trial, and Jamie goes free. <laughs> I mean, nobody. Oh, I can do it better myself. I always was rather clumsy with my hands. Then use your head for a change. I'm trying, Catherine. It seems the best thing is to be patient. Patient? And what about your son? Do you expect him to be patient? Do you expect him to be still and wait till Jamie Stewart's trial is over? Catherine, you I... know he could arrive at any time now. I want him born at home. I know. Then what are you going to do? Right now, eat supper. You mean to tell me that... I mean that Cobb says to wait for a break. That makes sense. To hear a story, gather near me while I talk, and I'll tell you of some gallant men who'd sooner ride than walk. You wild colonials know them, they're bush rangers, one and all, and they've made both friends and enemies, especially Ben. Now, Ben Hall was a squatter with a peaceful turn of mind. Until he was arrested, he was friendly, he was kind. So when all you folks are drinking down at the local hall, you'll toast the queen, but don't forget bush rangers like Ben. And Jamie Stewart, too. To the happy highwayman. You know, Mike, Cobb and Company guarantees the gold shipments from the field. Now, men work hard to mine that gold, but other men, like Jamie Stewart, figure there are easier ways to get it. He shot one of my drivers. The driver drew on Jamie. He wasn't afraid to shoot it out. Mike! You should uh, thank us for detaining you, Mr. Cobb. Testifying against Jamie Boy wouldn't have made you any too popular. I don't hear any ballads of the good man Jamie killed. Seems like my choice of songs would upset you, Mrs. McKenna. Perhaps a song of the season would please you?
Where the adversary, Mr. Cobb? While you're playing games, Lachlan tried to escape. From now on, nobody goes outside. Nobody. I didn't make it, my dear. I didn't get as far as the corral. What's the matter with you, Lachlan? Here's Terry slaving away over a holiday feast, and you want to leave? My wife needs a doctor. Any fool can see that. Any fool can see she's faking. Bill, now, Bill! Bill! Keep out of this, Cobb. Terry, keep her away. This is my fight, huh? My fight. All right. <laughs> different. You and I would make quite a pair. There's no love lost between him and me, but don't uh, count on it to help you any. Oh, you men. You're all alike, mourning over a bit of medicine. But while you're fighting, you'd rather die than show the pain. There. It's the best I can do. Well, there's something else you can do, Terry. Your brother had a gun. Chris, if I knew where it was, I wouldn't give it to you. Well, it'd be suicide. One man against the four. What is it, Terry? I'm losing Mike. This man is like a god to him. Oh, I've seen the signs. Restlessness of a boy doing a man's job too soon. Well, I've tried to teach him about responsibility. It just seems like chains. Well, this man's life looks fine and free. But I can't blame Mike. The man is a way of taking hold of your heart. I know. You want to tell me about it? It's a big country, Chris. Sometimes you can't run far enough to hide from the mistake. He's my husband, the boy's father. Does Mike know? I don't think so. You think a man would want a better life than that for his son? Last night you sang a ballad about Ben Hall. Strikes me as something sad about a man in an unmarked grave. Well, the man's past caring. I suppose one day they'll write a song about you. And twist and turn the truth. Until you were just a good man who went wrong through no fault of your own. Well, wasn't I? You're a man who lives outside the law. You keep your gun hand free. You're afraid to put your back to the door because you can't trust the men you ride with. That's not the kind of life a man wants for his son. So you know about this? Mm-hmm. 
Well, he's been pestering me to come along. He'll be running off sooner or later anyway. But you're a lonely man. You're tired of running. You want somebody you can trust. Somebody who thinks you're more than you really are. So what happens when he finds out it's not all song and story, but just bragging and brutality? You're sick of it yourself. Why drag the boy into it? I didn't mean to. I'm running out of water from Mrs. Lockley. I'll take the water, Mike. You know, you did that automatically, the same as another man that put up his arm to ward off a blow. Well, that's the pattern of it. Tension and waiting for a police trap or a bullet in the back. Did you see the way his gun came up so fast? Think I could ever do it? Well, one thing came faster, Mike. His fear. Will you shut up? You want the boy to think it? Well, you know what I mean. Shells? That's what I can find. You can't do this by the rules. He'll have his chance. I wouldn't be any trouble, dear. There are lots of things I could do. We'll see when the time comes, boy. We'll see. Well, you want to fix that wheel there? Stand away from him, Mike. Do as he says, boy. All right, get it over with. Turn around. <laughs> Only an American could be such an idealistic fool. Now listen, I'm going through that door. I'm going to take a horse and ride for a doctor. And I'll kill the man who tries to stop me. Do you know what you're doing? Mm-hmm. The boy thinks you're one thing I think otherwise. Well, the boy could be right, partly. Now we'll see. Stand up. All right. You do flashy tricks with a gun, but it's my guess that's all they are, just flashy tricks. All right, you're fast. Go ahead and draw. It's a little bit different from drawing on a target, isn't it? A target can't shoot back. All right, you've had your chance. Throw over your gun. All right, cop.
A woman with child may die on that night. I wouldn't want that on my conscience. Cobb, if you'll give me your word you won't make any more trouble, I'll let Lachlan and Bart here go for help. I said hold it, Bart! <laughs> A man dies, a man is born, I swear. Tell Terry, I gave her a gift for Christmas. A son. When Chris dared him to draw, he backed down. And then he threw his gun over. He was a coward. One day your mother will tell you that what he just did was the bravest act of his life. <laughs> 